Hey guys, happy Friday. I know there, I'm seeing these um, notifications come up and it's like, I hope you can find me. Here's the deal. Um, we try to do this every noon and um, every Friday at noon and we pop on here. So I'm going to give just a minute. You know how all this is. It just takes a minute. There you go. There you go. Hey, Miss. Hey, Mary. We were talking about talking about you this morning. All right, so making sure I have no lipstick on my teeth. So I'm gonna wait just a minute, let y'all pop on here. T, if you can do me a favor, I think I took a picture on your phone. Make sure that we can let them go live. As you pop on here, say, hey, hey, Jennifer. I wanna give everybody just a minute to pop on here. Um, this, I, first of all, hey, Miss Michelle. I wanna tell y'all what a blessing you are to me. T and I were working here in the studio this morning and we were just saying what a beautiful community we have. And hey, Tish, that's nothing to, hey, Lynn, that's nothing to take for granted. Just what a gift. We are all, we, we all love crafting a beautiful life. Did you get it? We all love crafting a beautiful life, don't we? Um, so trying to get these guys situated over here because I know, hey, Craig, so just do that. I'm not seeing anything. It went away. Now? Okay. All right. So, all right. So let me tell you today, um, I was thinking about as, um, as Jean and I have gone antiquing, and I can ask y'all this, as, as you go antiquing and when you see something, what normally, hey, Jennifer, that's right. Memphis is in the house. Um, um, mm, so good seeing your name. So good seeing, um, so just so good seeing all of y'all. So as you pop on here, say, hey, tell me where you're tuning in from. Um, my name is Amy Howard. I am the mother maker here at um, Amy Howard at Home. And I love what I say, crafting a beautiful life. I love teaching you how to craft a beautiful life. Hey, over here on Instagram. So but what, what's one of the things when you are looking for, for furniture, when you see something and your heart just goes, <gasps> does anybody else do that? When we are out and we're shopping and Gene Howard, that's a whole other video I'll have to do and tell you what he tells me. But what gets us excited? It's the finish. It's the finish. It's the color palette. This is the year of green. If anybody doesn't know, green is going to be a huge color this year. Going into those warm tones, greens, browns, reds, big, big, big colors. So, I wanted to show you. I was playing in the studio. I want you to see this. And I was working on what it was I wanted to be able to show you this week. And I saw inspiration. T, can you bring me my iPad? I want you to see this. So a lot of people will say, well, Amy, where do you come up with stuff? I want to show you. A lot of times I try to do inspiration from antiques. Um, I want to pull the picture up that I, that I worked on, and I want you to be able to see. Because when you've been doing finishes as long as I have, um, too long to count, to be quite honest with you, um... I find great inspiration in different finishes. And so I want to see if I can find this. If I can't, I'm going to keep just moving on and show you. But I will reverse engineer how to create a finish. And so that's where a lot of my inspiration comes on teaching you how. I tell you what, T, if you'll buzz through some of these and find it's a chippy finish that looks like this. It's a close-up. Anyway, so um, I saw this on a cabinet. I saw it on a cabinet, and I thought, oh, my gosh, I've got to show them how to do that. And it's a fairly simple process, but here's the caveat. Here's what I don't want you to do. No. Here's what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to think you can take sandpaper, and you can start going over some chalk-based paint, and that you're going to get a beautiful, distressed finish. It's not possible. 
there's a process that you're going to have to go through. And I am proud to say that, that I have found products and developed them um, drool. Oh, uh, Michelle, you're my sister from another mother. Drool. Like, that, see, that, this just makes my, my heart go pity pat, but look at that. This looks authentic. Believe it or not, this is being done in Europe. On a lot of the pieces that you're finding, they're made out of old wood, and um, a lot of those countries allow them to be able to say that it is a, an antique, but in essence, it's really not. It's been painted just a few months before. I actually worked in a bodega and I was able to learn um, the processes to be able to create this look. So I want to walk you through it today. And I want to show you that you can take pieces that really don't have that beautiful patina to it. And we're going to create it on something that we have found. And we're going to rescue, restore, and redecorate it to look like this. All right, so I'm going to turn this down. I've got Instagram over here. And I'm going to go on and turn this down, but here's the deal. Say hi when you pop on. Tell me where you're tuning in from. I go back and I look at every single person, and I answer as many questions I can. And I have my team in Memphis that helps me with that as well, but here's the deal. If you share this video and you tag some good friends that you know love to DIY, they'll appreciate you sharing it, but also your name goes in for a drawing. And we're going to be giving away a lot of the products that I use here today as I'm teaching you. Here's the other benefit. We're going to give you 20% off on the products used today. So if there's a process, if you've, maybe you've got some of the products at home, but you're missing something else, this is an opportunity for you to be able to save 20%. And we do that because we want to encourage you to learn. You know, um, I told T this morning, I yes, it's, it's great to sell products. It's great to be able to build a business because I have an incredible team of people and families that you're, you're, you are helping a small business that we can turn around and help other people. But you know what I love more than anything else? I love the fact that I can teach you something. I love the fact that I can help women build businesses and men too, for that matter. But that, that, that community that we have built together, that's what blesses my soul. And so the, the paint is just a byproduct. So doing these Finish Fridays is my chance to be able to teach you, and that blesses me. So um, I just want you to know that. Anyway, all right, so I'm going to turn this down, and I want to have it. Let me see if I can turn that down so that way you can see. Here we go. All right, now, now you can see. Much better than my, my ceiling. All right, so... I'm going to be starting with um, with a piece of trim. Now, I will tell you, I love these because it looks like a little mini piece of furniture, and it really allows me to be able to kind of work around some corners and everything. I went to uh, Lowe's and got these. So those of you that are decorative artists, you love redoing furniture for people, look at this. It's, it's just a really fantastic um, piece of wood for you to be able to work on. I don't want you starting and working on a piece of furniture. I want you to come up with the finish that you're going to have first. That's going to be very important. So the first thing we're going to do, and this may be something that you haven't been as familiar with, you can see I had a little snafu earlier, is the fact that I'm going to be starting with my Better With Age. Now, this Better With Age is a fantastic product because it allows you to be able to take wood from being brand new and it actually works with the tannins in the wood and it ages it. Because here's the reason why. Let's look at the piece. Let's, let's dissect this just a minute. Look right here. Do you see this? If I was, when I go back into the wearing process when I'm trying to get a really gorgeous chippy finish like this, I want to be able to see this wood showing through here. Now, here's, here's the mistake some people make. This color is too dark on a lot of people, on their furniture. If you have a really dark piece that you're trying to start with, please make sure that it's not going to fight with the wear and the finish that you're going to get with this. I want it to be a very pale um, brown, if we can. So you may want to sand it to get to this point. So... So the first thing you've got to do, and the, part of the reason, that's why I want you to be able to understand, if you want to create a really gorgeous chippy finish, we want to make sure that um, we're going to have a pretty wood to show through, as if um, ages and ages of have passed, 
and different people have owned that piece and painted it and it's popped off along the way. That's what looks beautiful. All right, so I'm gonna put in all my gloves. I don't have to, I'm just doing this to kind of protect, to be quite honest with you, is to protect my nails. But um, when I'm working with the Better With Age, I like wearing gloves and I'm gonna be pulling some stuff today. So now, look what I'm doing. I'm agitating it because with a lot of the products, whether it's milk paint, whether it's Better With Age, whatever it is, you wanna make sure that you're agitating it. So I just leave this um, stir stick in here and I'll agitate it in order to be able to, to um, put it onto my surface. So now I'm gonna take a sponge brush because it's gonna hold a lot of the product. I'm gonna stick it down in here. And then I'm going to put it on top of the wood. Now, if you're working with cherries, if you're working with oaks, Lands of Goshen, those are so fabulous. They have a lot of tannins in them. If you're working with pines um, and a lot of birches, you're not going to have as much tannins in them, so they're not going to go as dark. The more tannins in the wood, the darker this is going to be. So, a lot of people might say, well, Amy, why are you using Better With Age instead of Stain? The Stain is definitely an option, but I love the fact that this will dry quickly. It oxidizes. I don't have to put any matte sealer on it. I don't have to wipe it off, nothing. It's just a nice change. So I'm gonna set this aside. I wanted to show you that first step. And so basically, this is how it dried down. Let me show you. So here's the before, look at this. Look how that aged that. That is just aging the wood. It's not a stain. It's gone all the way through the wood. It's not coming off. I don't have to seal it. I don't have to do anything to it. But this is the before and this is the after. So it's given me that lighter color of brown that's not going to compete. See? So that's that brown there that I'm gonna be pulling through to distress it, that's what I'm going for. So the next thing I'm gonna do, that's step one. Step two, I'm going to come in and I'm going to apply crack gesso. Now, this I developed this product. It doesn't exist anywhere else. There's no other company that has it. It's This is it, because the process that I have developed in developing this product is only to, well, it's to do two things. One, it's going to give you the gesso, the white, that as things flake off on an antique piece of furniture, and that white shows through a lot of times was gesso. But here's the other thing that this does. What is it, the first word? It cracks it. It will allow you to be able to get a crack in your milk paint that is very natural, it's very fissure-like, and it will allow it to be able to pop off. That's what I love. So. I'm going to mix up one part cracked gesso with one part water. I use warm water. You don't want to use cold water because as you're working with it, it's going to have a tendency. Um, it kind of has a jelly type consistency. Now, I mixed this up for Tom's sake right before I went live and I wanted you to see what it looks like. So I'm going to pull this up by my spoon and I want you to just kind of see. See the consistency? It's like... Um, I tell you what, it's, I would say that it, it's kind of like a pancake batter. Um, Gene Howard makes us pancakes every Saturday morning with fresh blueberries. I'll give him a shout out. Um, all right, so basically I want you to see it's about the consistency of pancake batter. Tip, this is, this is a pro tip. If you want to be able to have it to where the majority of your milk paint is going to pop off, then thicken this up and paint it on. I usually will do one part warm water to one part uh, cracked gesso. So let's go on and paint this on. And to do this, I'm just gonna use a chip brush. Guys, as you pop on here, say hello. Tell me where you're tuning in from. And if you share this video, your name goes in for a drawing um, that we are going to be giving away a lot of the products that I am working with today. And it's also part of caring. We say sharing is caring, but also the products that um, I am using today, we always do Finish Friday products 20% discounted, so that way you can buy everything and turn around and do your projects. All right, so now as I'm putting this on, you're like, okay, well, this isn't anything special. I'm getting ready to show you something different. I don't know that I've ever showed it to you before, so I just wanna get this on. 
So now the first application of the cracked gesso, I am putting it on in one direction. Now here's, here's a caveat, what I don't want you to do. I don't want you to go this way and that way. Go with the grain, but you need to go in one direction. Because if I do, if I put it on this way and then I come back and I go against the grain, you're gonna have a cross hatching effect in your finish and that is not desirable at all. So I want you to, to the first application, we're gonna do two coats. I'm gonna brush it on. Well, hey, who was that from, Pan was that you? Somebody just said, hey, from Panama City Beach. I'm gonna have to go back and look at that because that's where I am now residing. Okay, so now, I'm gonna take a hair dryer and I apologize in advance for the sound, but I want you to see something. I'm gonna set this just a little bit. Because I don't want it to run. When you're doing this at home and you're gonna be working on a piece, I really would like for you to um, let this dry completely before you go to this, this next step. So now I'm gonna introduce a tool that I want you to use. Same cracked gesso that we mixed up. It's the consistency of the pancake batter. And now I have sitting over here on my, on my desk, I need to check, can you guys see me? All right, there we go. What do I have? I have a seawall sponge. Now look at this guy, he's been loved. He's been loved. And I like the fact that he's got this open area. Now I'm gonna show you, I've got another one over here that it's very tight. Do you see the difference? When I am working with my um, sponges, I'm very particular on what they look like and um, knowing the look and the openness of it is gonna dictate and tell me what my finish is gonna look like. So now I'm gonna dip my sponge brush with the larger nodules in it into my crack gesso. And now I'm going to sponge this on. So what did I do first? The first thing I did is I brushed it on. I want it to come to a complete dry. Then I'm gonna come back with the same crack gesso that I mixed up. If you wanna dry it with a hair dryer, that's just gonna speed up the process. And now I am sponging it on. This process of sponging on the crack gesso is gonna do two different things. It's gonna load up, it's gonna load up the crack gesso, and when it dries down, you're gonna have some texture to it, and that's gonna make a huge difference in the finish that you're gonna get. So now, for time's sake, let me move this. Now I've got some clean white paper. For time's sake, I have one that I did for you to see yesterday. Now look at this. Do you see? See how um, it's got a lot of texture to it? And it looks like it's almost kind of getting ready to pop off. This is glorious. Glorious, glorious, glorious. So now when I get ready and I'm gonna come back and put my color on top of it, I've got a great looking piece. Now, so again, this is what I'm going for. This really gorgeous, Italian, guys, you can't go to Italy. If we were all gonna pop on a plane today, we're all together, we're gonna have the best shopping trip ever. First of all, I would be in hog heaven with y'all. But this is the look that you're gonna see on a lot of Italian antiques that are selling for thousands upon thousands upon thousands of dollars because it looks very authentic. It's great looking, look at that. You can't get that with an acrylic based paint. It's just not, okay, I've got another sister on here, yummy. I, anybody, if you say yummy on a painted finish, you're my sister. We just got a different, a different mother. All right, so now I've got three colors that I'm working with. I've got Pompeii Gray, which is gonna be the top of this. This is Pompeii Gray. I've got Southern Gentleman which is a gorgeous dark gray, has just a little bit of green in it. Then I've got topiary. Now, the topiary is what I'm wanting. This is my color. This is the color that I'm wanting. The topiary though, I'm gonna add just a little bit of Southern Gentleman to it, so that way it's gonna richen up that green color. Yummy. Hey girl. Okay, so now let's go on and do that. I'm gonna show you. When I am mixing a color that I've gotta have as my base, 
I am going to mix it in a dry state first. Grab a spoon. So basically, I'm gonna take a little bit of my topiary melt paint and a little bit of Southern Gentleman. I don't wanna go with black. Black is just gonna be way too dark. So I'm gonna go with just a little bit of Southern Gentleman. That's it. So this is how you can start customizing your own colors of milk paint. Now, when I mix this up like this, now watch, because of the nature, with our pigments, they come from Provence, they're all natural, they're gorgeous, it's what gives you this glorious color, they are not a synthetic pigment. So when this dries down, this is the color that it's gonna look like. So when it goes wet, what happens? It goes darker. When I mix water with this, it's gonna go much darker, but it's gonna dry down lighter. I usually mix up a little bit in a paste, make sure it's getting all mixed up, and then I'll add more water. So I've got one over here that I mixed up earlier. Now, here's what happens. It doesn't have the synthetic properties of um, that a lot of paint has in it. So what happens as you're working with it, you've got to make sure that you've got a little stir stick, a little craft stick in it, that you're constantly agitating it as you're working because that's going to allow you to be able um, to make sure you've got that yummy pigment and color in it. So let me get this over here so that way you can see. All right, so... I'm gonna go on and take um, one of my chip brushes. Make sure this is stirred up good. Should pop on here, guys, say hey, share this video, tag some good friends and your name's gonna go on for a drawing because I always give, um, I give product away for people that share the video. And all the products that I'm using today are 20% off. There's a code that should be on this link here, that way you can get them. All right, so now I'm going to go on and paint this on here. I'm just painting the base. Here's the other thing that you'll notice. If this is your first time watching, um, watching me, the milk paint is much thinner than normal paints. It's, it's kind of, it has a water consistency. But that doesn't mean that the coverage isn't good, and it doesn't mean that the paint's not good. It just means that it is a casein-based paint that when you are working on a surface, you're going to have to make sure that you are working it uh, on it flat. You will not be able to work on it as a vertical surface. So if you're working on a piece of furniture, you're just going to have to lay it down. And then that way, you've got a little bit more control over it. So I'm going to push this off to the side. That was my mixture of Southern Gentleman. Just wait. Are y'all ready? Let's get our hair dryer. And I apologize again for the sound. But I'll, it's just, we're all going to be watching paint dry. Let's watch the color change. Let's lay it here so you can see it. And I want you to see how it will start to change from that really dark green to the lighter green. It will go back to the color that it was in its pigmented form. There's no way you're gonna be able to get a glorious um, chippy finish any other way. And again, I developed the crack gesso. It does not exist. Um, I have a patent on it. I, ha I developed it. There was a reason. I wanted to be able to get this texture. Look at that. Look at that texture. Even before any antiquing or anything on it, Isn't that drying down to such a pretty color? Now let's go over here. If you have questions about this process, ask me on here because I go back and I will answer, Gene and I and my team in Memphis will answer all of your questions. Could you mix Southern Gentleman with Amalfi? Oh, absolutely you could, Jessica. That would be fabulous. Look 
at that even as it's drying. All right, again, I'm so sorry for the noise. All right, so now let's go on and add. Do you remember what the top coat was that we were going to put on the top? Because I love these. You know, so many of you write in and you're like, what was the color combination that you used again? <laughs> what was it? So color combinations are important and they make a big difference. So I am using Pompeii Gray on the top. This Pompeii Gray with the topiary with just a little bit of Southern Gentleman in it is yummy. Just yummy. I love it. I love, love, love it. So the Pompeii Gray, it's, um, it's not too cool as far as a color. It's really pretty with this green. So I'm going to move this over here. So now I'm just going to come in. I want to make sure... I've gone with a smaller brush, just strictly for a little bit more control here on my surface. But if I was doing a larger piece of furniture, I would not be using a brush this small. Such a pretty color. And I don't know if you can tell, look how chippy my crack gesso is. Look, that's what I'm painting on top of. So I've already got some beautiful texture there that is really going to allow me to be able to get this incredibly authentic looking finish. So now look, do you see when I'm working on that? Look how I'll just agitate it. I want to do that constantly when I'm working on it because I don't want my paint to settle at the bottom. So now I will tell you, I'm just going back and just trying to get my drips. Now, I'm not gonna put anything here. I'm gonna allow the white from my cracked gesso to be um, a delineation between the Pompeii and the topiary color. I like that. I think it's pretty. Um, and I think it would be done actually on um, a piece of furniture. So I've popped my brushes, my tools, everything in water. Here's the great thing about the um, milk paint. It's all water-based. There's no VOCs. It's very, um, it's very easy to work with. And those of you that know me, I'm asthmatic, so it doesn't bother me in the least. So now let's dry our top. This is our Pompeii again with this green, which I love. I think they're fabulous together. It doesn't take but just a minute to dry it. And if you're going to be working on a piece of furniture and you want to get this look, I really encourage you, go. you can go to, to Lowe's, which is where I got these trim pieces. And it's going to give you an idea of what it's going to look like on your furniture. Can you literally see that drying? How quickly it's drying. Oh my gosh, now I'm seeing somebody said fabulous question. I don't know what the fabulous question was, but I'll go back. Bear with me. Now, we did two coats, remember? And you can go back and watch the replay on this. We did one coat that we brushed on of our cracked gesso. And, okay, I'm seeing why does the 20% discount not work? Now, I will tell you, Cheryl, you can call the office. You can call the Amy Howard at Home office, and they'll help you. The 20% discount is working only on the products that I'm working with today. So, um, but if you have any questions, just call the office, and they are the sweetest people. They will walk you through that. All right, so now what's it time for us to do? Let's look at this for just a second. Look at the texture. We've not antiqued this. We've not done anything, and we've got all this glorious texture at this point, and that's all thanks to the cracked gesso. So now I'm going to take a little bit of, does anybody want to guess what we're getting ready to do now? We are going to take some antiquing glaze. So I've got my antiquing glaze, and I'm going to pour it into a container, and I'm going to go on and use a... I'm going to use a seawool sponge again 
Now, the other thing is these seawall sponges are gonna dry really hard. So we've gotta make sure that we get them back into water so they're very pliable again to be able to work with. And I'm gonna dip it down into my, to my antiquing glaze. Now, I'm gonna do a pass because I've gotta be careful because you're gonna notice something. Look what's happening already. Look, look what's happening. The paint is starting to lift and all I'm doing is I'm going in and I'm trying to get a pass. And a pass is basically when I'm going over the whole surface to be able to get it wet. You cannot see what you're doing on Instagram. Okay, I am so sorry. I told T it's kind of hard to be able to, um, to do this with two cameras. I'm so sorry. All right, so now here's something I want to make sure that I go over this with you. Every time I use this and I am putting this down and I am lifting it with my antiquing glaze, I need to have a second bath here that I stick this in, my, stick my sponge down in here and wring it out. Look at that. So that way now I can come back over here and put it in my glaze. I don't want to get my glaze dirty with paint. So now let's look at this other side. Let's go over here. Had a little bit of a run, that's no big deal. Oh my goodness, look at that. That's just like a happy little surprise. Look at that, it lifted. That's what the cracked gesso was doing. It's allowing me to be able to come in. I'm not scrubbing it, I'm literally pressing it down and I'm lifting it back up. Is that not glorious? This is the only way for you to be able to get just a really pretty, authentic finish. Look at that. Look. Now, I'll start looking at this, and I'm going to pull a little bit of this away, but I don't want to overdo it. I like for there to be this irregularity to it. Um, I'm not looking for uniformity. Now, I'm going to clean out my sponge brush again, my sp or my tool, my sponge, dip it down into here, and then I'm going to come and I'm going to work on the top. Now this Pompeii that's at the top is a lot lighter. You're not gonna see as much difference in the Pompeii gray and the cracked gesso that's underneath, but I want you to see, look at this. Let's dry this down just a little bit. Look at that, can you see that? Is that not yummy? Look at that. This is the way that you can have it to where it looks so natural, so authentic. Love that. Now here, please allow this to be, like when you see that, let that be enough and just get excited and not overdo it. If you wanna be able to get just a little bit to come off the edge like this, you can. But what I don't want to happen, I love that gradation, that's really pretty. What I don't want people to do is to overdo it. You need to, sometimes it's best to stop. It's like if we ate dessert every day, we'd get sick and we, we'd have all kinds of problems. Let's, a little bit like this can accentuate and make this over here look that much more glorious. All right, so now I'm gonna, I need to dry this one more time. And here's the other thing. No two pieces are going to look alike, ever. Ever. Like, this is one that I did yesterday, and there's no way I'm going to be able to get it to match identical. Now, I, I'm, I had to turn this off because I want you to see something. We're wrapping this up, so hang with me. What do you see happening? I'm gonna show you over here. Do you, what do you see happening? Can you see this? As I'm starting to dry it, the heat is actually having a reaction. The heat 
is what is starting to cause some of the cracked gesso to dry and to curl. It's like it's starting to curl up just a little bit. So I'll get that heat. So part of a question, let's say if you are, oh my goodness, this is so gorgeous. And a lot of this is because I sponged on that second coat of cracked gesso. That made all the difference in the world. Now, I need to dry this top part just a little bit more. Look at that. Can you see the cracks? Can you see the cracks? So a question that you might have would be, well, Amy, if I don't, if I don't hit it with a hairdryer, am I going to get the cracking that I, that you're getting? The answer is no, you won't get it as much. The cracking is accentuated by the excessive heat from the hairdryer. So I will go back, I promise, and I will read y'all's, um, I will read y'all's comments. So now all I have to do is finish out with a little bit of light wax and dark wax. But I want to show you a difference. I'm going to kind of dry brush it. I don't want to overdo it. Because what's going to happen when I start doing this with my brush, I'm going to lose some of this paint. And that's okay, that's very desirable for me. Some of it's gonna pop off. See how it's coming off on my table? And that's, that, again, that's very desirable. I have no, I have no qualms. I love that um, more of my green came off than it did even on the sample that I was working on yesterday. Now, here's something that I want you to do that I wouldn't normally tell you. Don't buff this. Don't buff this a lot. Because I am not interested in having a sheen on this. I want this to look dead, flat, old, like I've just pulled it out of a barn somewhere. And then that way it's going to allow me to be able to really make it look that much more authentic. You can come back with a little bit of dark wax and just around the edges, um, just here and there, no more than maybe eight to 10%, but don't buff it, leave it alone. If you wanna have just a little bit of buffing in here with your, um, with your rag, if you wanna be able to do that just a little bit, I'm okay. But this finish is more about it looking like we drug it out of a fabulous antique shop in Rome and it's gonna be just this gorgeous Italian chippy finish that you're not gonna be able to get any other way. So I am thrilled. Those of you that you think it's yummy and you like it, well, you're my sister from another mother. And I just hope that it's a situation to where you start to see, I wanna turn this around. I want you to start to see that you truly can create beautiful finishes like this yourself. They are, these, these are when people kind of go and they buy them. Finishes sell furniture, I promise. Hey, Leslie, I'll go back. I will answer your questions. Yummy. Thank you, Laura. I'll go back and I'll answer your questions. Thank you so much. I want you to know if you go to the website, we're starting to work on getting all these Finish Fridays into blog posts. So that way you've got step outs and you'll be able to go back, see the materials that I used, see the process that I used, but also you can always go back. We'll be, um, oh, you're just the sweetest, Lisa. Thank you. Well, because nobody's wanting you to know how. There are people that are furniture manufacturers all over Europe. We ship product all over the world. And truly, these are pieces. Now that I've shown you how to do it, you're going to go in antique shops and go, that's what Amy told us how to do. 
you're right. It's the same exact thing. So hopefully it will encourage you and um, you, can, you can truly change the way you are doing your finishes. So have a fantastic Friday. Have a fantastic weekend. Know how much we love and appreciate you all so very much. And be sure and tune in on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesday at noon, Thursday at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. I have my artist in residence that are doing an amazing job of teaching you how to do finishes. Mwah. Love you guys. Share the video. Tag some friends. Your name will go in for a drawing. And don't forget, you will get 20% off on any of the products that I used in the video today. Love you guys. Bye.